Hello everyone, welcome to lab 10. In this lab, we will switch to using the handheld keypad that is an optional accessory to the Mobi Drive instead of the Motion Studio software. Sometimes it's not convenient to open software just to monitor a parameter or reset a fault. Well, the keypad has the ability to view and change many different parameters. It also can be used to view the fault history and reset them as well. If your Mobi Drive is installed within visual sight of the application, you could also operate the motor manually using the keypad if it's safe to do that with the type of application you have. Here's what the top half of the keypad looks like. And before we go to the demonstration portion, I want to explain the purpose of each control button. The button with the globe icon allows you to toggle between the pre-programmed languages. If you accidentally change the language while using the keypad, you can keep toggling this button until it returns to the language you prefer. There are only a handful of languages to toggle through until you get back to the preferred one. The square icon with the lines inside of it is the menu button. You can press this to see the different functions of the keypad, such as the parameter tree, the upload or download of the parameters from the Mobi Drive, manual operation, and others. Once you've chosen a function, the up and down arrows allow you to cycle through the different options. The left or right arrows either delete the selection or confirm it, or you can exit or enter the menu options with these keys as well. The switch key is helpful when you're in the parameter tree and don't want to make a change. You can press this key to move the cursor out of editing back to just viewing the parameter. If you feel comfortable and it's safe to operate the motor using the keypad, the stop and start keys are what you would use in manual mode to control the motor. Now that we've described the purpose of these buttons, let's head to our Mobi Drive and demonstrate how to use some features of the keypad. So here we are to the demonstration portion of our lab activity, and we're not going to be focusing on the software in this lab, but I have this on screen so when we are using the keypad, you can look over to the software periodically to see the status of the digital inputs and see some parameters change while we conduct this lab. And I will mention that we are now communicating back over the ethernet network instead of the serial cable, and that's because the keypad is now occupying the port where we would usually plug in a serial cable. And this Mobi Drive is still set up with the parameters from the last lab activity, which used the table positioning application module. So let's head to the keypad. Now we're looking at the keypad and currently the backlight is not on. So to be able to get the backlight to activate, we just need to press any key. And then now the backlight is on and currently we can't do anything with the keypad. And that's because there is this globe icon on it. And the reason there is this globe icon is because this keypad has been set to its factory condition. So the only time you will see this globe icon is if you are using a new keypad or if you reset the keypad using one of the menu items. So the only thing we can do right now is just press the globe icon. And this will pull up the different languages that are stored in this keypad. And we want to use English, so we will press this down arrow to select English. And then we'll press the right arrow, which is OK, to confirm our selection. Now the keypad is rebooting with the English language. And it jumps us to the basic display, which is what you would see during normal operation when you're not using the keypad. Currently, there is no speed on the motor, and then there is no amperage. And down here flashing, you can see that it's showing controller inhibit. And that's because our DI00 input is currently turned off. You can also see IPOS popping up here in the corner, which is matching with the red decimal in the seven segment display, meaning that there is an IPOS program loaded to this Mobi Drive, which is the application module that we loaded from the previous lab activity. And you can also see the number one on the seven segment display, which also means controller inhibit. So the first thing I wanna show you is how to navigate the keypad. And before you can do anything with the keypad, you need to press the menu button. So that will be this square with the lines in it to call up the menu. 
And then once you get to the menu, you can use the up and down arrows to scroll between the different selections and then the right arrow to jump into that selection and then the delete key to back out or either the menu key again to back out of that selection. So the basic display, if we press OK on that one, jumps us right back to where we just were. So if we press the menu button again, then we press the down arrow. We have the parameter mode, which allows us to view or edit the parameters similar to the parameter tree in the software. The variable mode, if we press OK to enter that one, is specifically if you know the H variable number of an IPOS program that you have loaded, you can either view the setting of that H variable, or you can change it if it's an H variable that you're allowed to change. So if we want to back out of this, we'll just press the menu key to back back out. And now we're back at the menu selections. If we scroll down one more, this is wake up parameter, which is an ability to program a parameter that you want to start automatically when you plug in the keypad. And you can see the H variable from before. It's what's suggested as the wake up parameter since it was the last thing we clicked on, but we don't want to use that feature. So we're just going to ignore the wake up parameter. The manual operation is to be able to operate the MobiDrive manually using the keypad. Startup is a way to load the motor information into the MobiDrive for a basic startup. Now you won't be able to start up any kind of permanent magnet servo motors or a CFC operating mode, but you can do basic startups like VF or either VFC operating mode. Copy to DBG and copy to MDX is a way to transfer parameters from the keypad to the Mobi Drive and the Mobi Drive to the keypad. The user menu is a way to program up to 50 different parameter numbers into a custom menu that's easier to access. And you can do that with this add and delete options here. The DBG delivery is a way to reset this keypad back to its delivery state condition. Unit setting is a way to change some specific parameters with a display of the keypad. IPOS status will show us some details of any IPOS program that is loaded to the Mobi Drive. Signature is the name of our Mobi Drive. So if we enter into that one, we can see that this is currently the name of our Mobi Drive. And to back out, we can just press the menu key. And then the exit will just bring us back to the main screen. So if we click on exit, we're back now to the basic display. The next thing I want to demonstrate is what happens when the Mobi Drive issues a fault condition. And since we are still using the same application module from the last lab activity, we can easily create a fault just by enabling the Mobi Drive without the hardware limit switches activated. So let's go ahead and just clear the controller inhibit by turning on DI00. And you can see now that the Mobi Drive shows a number two status, which means no enable. And then we can also see flashing down here in the bottom of the keypad, no enable. And then now if we give the enable signal without the limit switches turned on, we can see that we immediately caused a fault on the Mobi Drive and it is currently flashing F27. And then down here below, we can see the error number is 27. It gives us a description of the fault saying it's a limit switch fault. And then this fault does not have any sub error codes. So it's just sub error zero. If we want to get out of the message screen on the display, then we can press the delete key like it shows at the top. And then by doing that, it automatically jumps us to parameter 840, which is the manual reset parameter to be able to reset this fault using the keypad. Now, if we don't want to reset the fault, then we can just press this switch key in the center and then it will move our cursor, which is currently in edit mode, back up to the parameter number. And then now we can navigate to a different parameter if we want to, or we can press the menu key to back completely out of the parameters and then do something else with the keypad. But let's go ahead and just reset this fault. So to move the cursor back down to the edit mode, I just need to press the OK key. The cursor moves down into edit mode. And then now I can use the up and down arrows to change my selection. And it's set to no. If I go up, it goes to yes. There's no more at the top. And if I go down, there's no more below no. So it's just no and yes as our selections. So let's change it to yes. And then to confirm that, you can see the cursor is blinking. So let's now press the OK key. And now the move drive briefly cycles itself to reset the fault. And the fault came back immediately. 
And the reason the fault came back immediately is because we never turned off our enable signal and our inhibit. So even though we reset the fault, the mode drive immediately got another enable signal and the limit switches still weren't on. So let's go ahead and deactivate our enable and then deactivate the inhibit. And then now let's retry that reset again. So we'll press the delete key to back out of this message. It jumps us to parameter 840. It says, do I want to do a manual reset? And I say yes. And then I'm just going to say OK. And then now the Mobi Drive is resetting itself. And now the Mobi Drive is reset. And it's still left on parameter 840. So if I don't want to see that parameter anymore, I can just press the menu key and it will back me completely out of the parameter. I will mention that if you go to the parameter mode and then press OK, it sometimes will jump you back to the last parameter you were on. If you don't want that to happen, then just press the menu key to get back to your menus and then scroll all the way down to exit. And then click OK to exit. And then now the keypad will forget that that was the last parameter you were at. So now when you go to menu and then parameter mode and then press OK, it starts at triple zero not the last parameter that you were at. So let's not edit any parameters right now, but let's back out of this. And then let's present a hypothetical situation where we are troubleshooting a fault and we haven't determined if the fault is caused by a parameter setting or something else in the application. So we'll test if the fault still occurs even with very basic MobiDrive parameters. Now changing the parameters as a troubleshooting step can introduce even more problems. So before we do that, we want to back up the parameters so we can revert them back to the original configuration. So let's scroll through our keypad menu to see our options. And we can see right here, we have an option that says copy to DBG or one that shows copy to MDX. Now I will mention that you need to be very careful with these menu selections because there is not a sub menu asking for confirmation. So as soon as you press the OK key, on one of these selections, it's going to start that operation immediately. And the reason you need to be careful is you are going to be moving a file between the keypad and the Mobi Drive. And say, for instance, you accidentally choose copy to MDX first, but you borrowed a keypad from a different Mobi Drive. That would overwrite the parameters you need to back up with potentially completely different parameters from another application. So you would not want to do copy to MDX unless there is a good file in the keypad you're trying to get onto your movie drive. So the first thing we need to do is back up this keypad with our current parameter set. So let's go back to copy to DBG, which this keypad is called a DBG 60. And that's why it says copy to DBG. And now we confirm that we're on the selection of the direction we want the file to travel from the movie drive to the keypad. So let's press the OK key. And immediately it starts moving the parameters from the Mobi Drive onto the keypad. Once it's done, it'll go back to this menu item. And now we have parameters that are stored on this keypad. The same thing is true if you had a good keypad with good parameters and you had to replace your Mobi Drive and you went to go plug it up and you wanted to get those good parameters onto your new replacement Mobi Drive. If you accidentally chose copy to DBG first, then you would overwrite the good parameters stored in this keypad with whatever is stored in the new Movie Drive, which is likely default parameters. So do be very careful about your file direction that you choose when you're using the keypad to manage the parameter file. Now that we've backed up our parameters to the keypad, let's factory reset this Movie Drive. So the keypad timed out on us, so we need to press the menu key. And then let's go to the parameter tree by selecting parameter mode and then click OK. And from experience, I know to factory reset this movie drive, that's going to be parameter 802. So if you are going to be using a movie drive a lot, it will be helpful to get familiar with parameters that you need to frequently go to. I don't expect you to have to frequently go to the factory reset parameter but there may be others that you want to frequently reference. So let's just type in like a number pad on a phone, 802, 
And we can see our cursor is right here at the first digit of the parameter. So we'll type in 802. And then now it shows us down below factory setting. And say, for instance, if you were a couple digits off of where you needed to be, then you can just use the arrow keys to get to different parameters and it will change the number for you. You could even press the delete key to move the cursor to other menu items and then select bigger groups of parameter menus. But let's go back to the 802 parameter. So we'll go to 80, press the OK key to move the cursor one more to the right, and then press the up arrow, and then go to 2. And then now to edit this, we need to press the OK key to get the cursor down to edit mode. And let's change this from no to something else. And if we press the down arrow, we can see there's no more directions down. So let's press the up arrow. It tells us standard. Let's see if there's anything else. Delivery condition. Let's see. And then that's the last one. There's nothing above delivery condition. Let's select delivery condition so that it resets all the parameters. And press OK to start the reset. And then now the Mobi Drive is cycling itself to delete all the parameters back to the delivery state. The keypad briefly loses communication during a factory reset. And now the Mobi Drive is reset. And if you look over to Motion Studio, you can see that we lost our Ethernet communication. And that's because the field bus card has timed out. So let's go find the cause of that. So let's press the menu button on the keypad. Let's go down to parameter mode and then press the OK key. And then the Ethernet parameters is in parameter 780. So let's type in 780. The IP address is still the same, so that's not the problem. So let's press the up arrow to go to 781. Subnet mask is OK. The standard gateway set to zeros is all fine. 783, the baud rate is fine. MAC address is fine. There's the issue. Our startup configuration has changed to DHCP. Our computer is not a DHCP server, so it lost communication to the field bus card. We will need to edit that back to using a static IP. So we'll press OK. Now we're in edit mode. If we press the down arrow, there's a reserved, so we don't want to use that. And then we have stored IP parameters. Let's press the up arrow to see if there's anything in the other direction. And there's nothing in the other direction, so we only have those three options. So let's change that down to stored IP parameters. And then press the OK key to make that parameter change. And then now the parameter change has been made. You can see the cursor is no longer blinking. So let's now move the cursor back up to the parameter number by pressing this switch key. And the only way to make that change take effect is to power cycle our movie drive. So let's just exit the parameter mode. And then let's go down to exit. Press OK. We'll need to observe our minimum power off time of 10 seconds to apply these changes. I'll fast forward through this wait time. Our power off time has expired, so that way we don't damage our Mobi Drive by turning it off and on too quickly. So now we can turn our Mobi Drive back on. And it's booting up. And now our software is communicating to our Mobi Drive again after making that change to the Ethernet parameters. Before we can test run this Mobi Drive and motor just with a basic parameter set, we first need to get motor parameters into this Mobi Drive. So let's run through a simple motor startup using the keypad. And to do that, we first need to make sure that we are inhibited, which we can see that it says controller inhibit, and then there's number one status. So we are now fine to do our startup. So we'll press the menu key and then scroll until we see startup and then press OK. The first option it gives us is which parameter set do we want to use? We're fine with parameter set one, so we don't need to edit that. So we'll just press the up arrow to move this number higher. And then it asks for the type of motors we want to use. And this number will not be in order, so don't think that's a problem. That's just the way the keypad is set up. These numbers do not numerically count in order. And it's set to single motor, which is what we have. So we're just going to not change that setting and just keep going up. And it says the operating mode. We don't want to use VFC. We want to use standard VF. So let's edit that one. 
by pressing the OK key. It moves the cursor down to edit mode, and now we can use our arrows. Let's change it to standard VF, and then accept that change with the OK key. And then now the cursor is back up to C26. Let's keep going up. DC braking, we don't want to do anything with that, so we're going to leave it set to no. The motor series is currently set to DRN, which is good. But if you happen to have a different motor series, then you can press the OK key and then scroll through the menu options here to find your motor series. If you were using a non-SEW motor, then that would be all the way at the top for third-party motor. But we are using a DRN motor, so we'll scroll all the way back to the bottom and select DRN. I do want to mention that if you have an older keypad, it may not have the new motor selections in it. So if you want to see the production year for the keypad, you can take your keypad off of your Movie Drive and flip it over. And then these last two digits right here after this slash are the year it was produced. So if you happen to have an old keypad and it doesn't contain the motor information for what you're using, then you can order a new keypad from your local SEW office. But this keypad is new enough to contain the DRN motor. So we will keep that as our selection. And it's already selected and it's flashing underneath C49. So we can just now press the up arrow. And then now our motor type is DRN 80 M4. So we'll press the OK key to edit this. And then scroll until we see DRN 80 M4. And then select that by pressing OK. The cursor moves back up to the number. And then let's keep making our adjustments. So this is not going to be a 50 hertz motor. It's a 60 hertz motor, so we need to change that. So we'll press OK, and then go down to 60 hertz, press OK. And then let's keep going up. The rated motor voltage is 460 volts, so we need to edit that. So let's go to OK. And then the number pad, we'll just type in 460. And then press OK, and it automatically applies the decimals after we press OK. And then if we keep pressing OK, it's not moving the cursor for us back up to the number. So we just need to press the switch key to make that cursor move for us. And you may see that sometimes where the cursor doesn't automatically jump back up. If you're trying to get it back up to the top, you can just press the switch key. Let's press the up arrow one more time. Motor frequency should be 60 hertz, so let's change that. And then press the switch key to move the cursor back up. And let's keep going through the menus. Mains voltage is 480. Press OK. Switch key. Response to TF sensor. It's not connected to this movie drive, so we're going to leave it set to no response. Let's press the up arrow. And then calculation. We do need to do the calculation, so we need to go to OK. And then select yes. And then it automatically does the calculation. And then now it jumps us to if we want to send these motor settings to the movie drive, just like you would with a software where you have to download it before it does anything. So let's download the motor settings that we've loaded so far into our movie drive by changing this to yes. And you don't have to press the OK key. It should just save it automatically. And there it is. It said copying data just for a second there. And it goes back to the save screen. And if we look to our software on the right hand side, we can see that our motor settings are now set to DRN 80 M4 and parameter 700 operating mode one is set to VF characteristic curve, which is different than it was before. And to back out of this startup screen, now that we're done, we can just press the delete key to get out. And then now we are out of startup and then we can just exit by scrolling down to exit and press OK. Now let's test run this Movi Drive and motor using our keypad. And since this is a demo unit, it's safe to be able to run the unit using the keypad. But if there's not a good view of the application from the control cabinet where the keypad would be, then do not do this with a keypad because you will have full control of the Movi Drive and the motor using the keypad. So if it's not safe to do that, then do not use this tool inside of the keypad. But to run this in manual mode, just to demonstrate this, we need to press the menu key and let's scroll down to manual operation. And then now manual operation is selected and then we'll press the OK key. And now we can see an H on the seven segment display, which means we are in manual control. And we now have full control of this Movi Drive 
using the keypad. And blinking down here in the bottom, it says controller inhibit. So we can't run it till we clear the inhibit. So let's go ahead and toggle on DI00 to clear the inhibit. All right, and then now it shows no enable. And then while you're in manual mode, your seven segment display will always show H. So to run this motor, we need to set a speed. And currently the minimum speed is set to 15 RPM, but we can change this to something else if we want to. But let's just start with 15 and then we can change it in a minute. So let's go ahead and press this run key to run the motor. And now we can see the motor is turning slowly clockwise. And if we want to stop it, we can just press the red stop key to stop the motor. And then let's say we wanted to go to counterclockwise. The way to go counterclockwise using the keypad is to load a negative speed. So let's just load negative 15 RPM. So we'll type in negative. Using this button down here at the bottom, we can see it placed a negative in front of the 15. And then now let's press the run button again. And now it's running counterclockwise at 15 RPM. Okay, let's go ahead and stop that. And you may notice that there is a high pitched whine on the motor. So we forgot to change one parameter, which is the modulation frequency. So let's exit manual mode. And the way to safely exit manual mode is to make sure you're stopped by pressing the stop. We will go ahead and turn off the inhibit input. So that way it sets the movie drive to a controller inhibit. And we can see it's flashing here now, controller inhibit. And then now we just press the delete key to get out of manual operation. And now the seven cent display goes back to a status of one. And then let's go change the modulation frequency. So we'll press the up arrow to go to parameter mode and then press OK. And the modulation frequency for VF mode is parameter 860. So we will type in 860. And there it goes, PWM frequency one. And then we can press the OK key to edit that. And let's change that from four to 16 kilohertz. And then press the OK key. And then now we've made that change. We want to get the cursor back up to the parameter number. So we'll press the switch key. Cursor moves. And let's go ahead and fix that parameter change. So let's navigate until we can see the parameter fix. So we'll press the up arrow to go to parameter 861. That's not the parameter fix. Let's keep going. There we go, PWM fix number one at parameter 862. Let's edit that, go to OK, and change that from off to on, and then press OK. And now we've made that change, so we'll press the switch key, and we are done changing our modulation frequency. So we can just press the menu key to get out, and then go back to manual mode, then press OK. Now we're in manual mode, we'll go ahead and turn on digital input 00 to clear the inhibit. And then now we know the motor moves counterclockwise and clockwise. So let's load a faster speed. So let's type in 100 RPM. So we'll type in with a number pad 100 and then press OK to accept that change. And you can see it gave a decimal place to it once it accepted that speed. And then to run it, we just press the run button. And now the motor is running. If we want to change the speed on the fly, we can do that. So let's just go ahead and type in 500. So we'll type in 500. And you can see that it has not accepted it yet because the cursor is still blinking. So let's press the OK key. And now it is accepted 500 RPM. And if we want to make this go the other direction, we can't just press the negative button on the fly. We actually have to load a new speed and then press the negative button while we're loading a new speed. So let's go ahead and type in 700. And then let's press the negative button to give it a negative sign. And then now we press OK. The motor ramps to a stop briefly and then now accelerates in the opposite direction. And if we want to stop the motor, all we have to do is press the stop button. And the motor is now stopped. You can use faster speeds than 700 RPM or 1000 RPM. But since you are manually controlling the motor and Moby Drive using the keypad, I would recommend to keep these speeds very, very slow since you will likely be a distance away from the application and your reaction time may be a lot slower because of your distance. 
So if you do use the keypad to operate the motor manually, always use a very, very slow speed. That is safe for the application. Okay, so to clear out of manual mode, we want to turn on our controller inhibit. So we'll deactivate DI00. And now we can see it says controller inhibit. And then we always have to back out of manual mode. If we leave this in manual mode from the keypad and then try to take back over with our switch box or from our fuel bus words, the Moby Drive will not respond to it because it's now being controlled by the keypad. So to be able to give control back to our normal operation, we always need to make sure we exit manual mode. So to get out of manual mode, we'll just press the delete key. And now we are out of manual operation. Okay, that was a demonstration of using the keypad for some common features. Now let's put the Moby Drive back to the way it was before we started this lab activity. So let's go ahead and go to our copy menus. And remember that caution, we wanna make sure that we are selecting the right menu item before we press okay. So copy to DBG will load parameters from the Moby Drive onto the keypad. We don't wanna do that because the keypad currently has good parameters and we don't want to overwrite them with our basic parameters that we just created. So we want to choose the second menu item, which is copy to MDX. We wanna take the good parameters from our previous lab activity off of the keypad and put them back on the Movie Drive. So let's press copy to MDX and then select okay. There's no warning and it starts moving those parameter files immediately. And the download sometimes does take a little bit longer than the upload, so just be patient for it to finish. And then now the download is complete and the Mobi Drive is recycling itself. We see that the IPOS program has been loaded and is started because of the red blinking decimal light and it's showing IPOS in the corner. And then if we press the menu button, and then come down to our IPOS information, which is right here where it says IPOS status and click on OK. It's gonna load in the IPOS information. Then let's open loaded module by pressing OK. And there it is, it says table positioning. So that's the correct parameters from the last lab activity. So let's press the menu key to get out of that and then check our signature and it says MDX table app, which is what we had from the last lab activity. So we now have our parameters from the last lab activity loaded back into our Moby Drive. And we can just go to exit. And if we look over to our software, we can see that parameter 700 is now set to CFC and IPOS. And then we can also see that our PWM frequency for CFC is back to 16 kilohertz and our motor information still shows DRN 80 M4 for the motor that we are using. All right, so this concludes the features of the keypad that I wanted to demonstrate in this lab. And we saw that the keypad is quite capable when you don't have access to the Motion Studio software. Now, it is easier to navigate to the Moby Drive parameters using the keypad if you know the specific parameter number. But if you don't know the parameter number, then you can use the arrow buttons to search for it, or you could download the Moby Drive system manual that has the full list of the parameters and their descriptions. In the next lab activity, we will switch back to using the Motion Studio software, and we'll change our table positioning application module to a different application that uses data over the Ethernet field bus to control the Moby Drive instead of the digital inputs. Thank you for your attention. Take care and have a good day.